Are you a control freak? A recovering control freak? Married to one? Do you work with one? If so, there's hope, and it's found in the season of Lent. Hey friends, this is Pastor Ron with this week's Message of Hope. In my past couple videos, we've looked at the first two temptations of Jesus in the desert following his 40-day fast. As you may recall, Lent marks those 40 days and is thus a time of prayer and fasting. The third and final temptation took place like this. It says in Matthew, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. <clears throat> this temptation can be called the temptation to be powerful. The acquisition of and holding on to power is one of the great traps people fall into. Let's go, I'd like to go up about 10,000 feet and get the big picture view, and then we'll zoom in a little bit and get closer to ground level where we live. Satan said he would give Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth if he would do just one thing, worship him. And Jesus not only rejects this crazy idea, he sends the devil away running. Jesus the incarnate Son of God, who had all power in the universe, was going to walk a different path. He would surrender his life by picking up a cross and carrying it to his death. He would lay his life down so the world could be saved. He would gain the kingdoms of this earth, to be sure, but not by political or military might. He would do it by pouring out his life as a sacrifice for sinners dying a criminal's death on the cross. Oh, how we forget the power of sacrificial love and the power of the cross. Whenever the church forgets this and acts like the world around us, seeking worldly or political power, it inevitably gets corrupted and its message compromised. Some of you may recall Chuck Colson. He served as special counsel to President Richard Nixon. In an interview once, Colson said, one of my jobs in the White House was to romance religious leaders. We would bring them into the White House and they would be dazzled by the aura of the Oval Office. And I found them to be about the most pliable of any of the special interest groups that we worked with. Colson was known as Nixon's hatchet man. He would later go to prison for crimes related to Watergate. It was in prison, humbled and stripped of all power, that Colson met Jesus Christ. Out of that humiliation, he later founded Prison Fellowship, a life-changing ministry bringing the transforming power of Jesus to inmates all around the world. It's sad, is it not, that religious leaders are so dazzled by worldly power. We should know better. If only we knew, I mean really knew, the spiritual power available to us through the Holy Spirit, we would seek nothing else. Now, Let's bring this down into our daily lives. You may never work in the White House or have a job with much influence or authority. We all nonetheless exercise some degree of power. When we handle it poorly, it looks like control. It manifests as, as control. That control is exercised over our little office, our family, our work, the classroom, the soccer team. We try to control others through manipulation throwing our weight around, trying to run things and run people's lives. Henry Nouwen asked, what makes the temptation of power so seemingly irresistible? Maybe it's that power offers an easy substitute for the hard task of love. It seems easier to be God than to love God, easier to control people than to love people, easier to own life than to love life. The more we seek to love and let go of control, the more we become like Jesus. But make no mistake, it's hard work to love other people. How do we gain mastery over this never-ending temptation to be powerful? We do it by worshiping God alone. We do it by reflecting deeply on the ways of Jesus. That's why Lent is so important. If it doesn't look like sacrifice, if it doesn't look like carrying a cross and saying no to our own preferences, if it doesn't look like surrender, if it doesn't look like love, it's not the way of Jesus. To be a disciple is to think, 
speak, and act in the name of Jesus. Many people give up things for Lent. How about trying this on for size? Who or what do you need to give up trying to control? Give it up for Lent and walk the hard but glorious path of love.